Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. The flood inquiry was today told a lack of information caused people to panic when floodwaters hit parts of southeast Queensland. Today's hearing in Brisbane marked almost four months since the River City was inundated by floodwaters. When floodwaters swamped southeast Queensland in January this year, it was information people wanted. But today's inquiry was told that what information was given wasn't always clear. Archerfield business owner Michael Baker said if more accurate information had been provided, he could have avoided a huge financial loss. There was an economic cost of around $350,000. Uh, delays, we have not yet finished the repair work inside the, uh, the building. Despite making every preparation for the rising waters, he says he didn't anticipate his warehouse going under because his calculations had been based on what he says was inaccurate data on the Brisbane City Council's flood maps. If we had the right information on the levels at Oxley Creek, then we would have made other decisions that would have lessened the economic cost. North of Brisbane and locals say a lack of information also panicked people when floodwaters rapidly isolated the communities of Caboolture and Moray Field. When you put out an information bulletin to say evacuate to higher ground, if you're in a low-lying area with no follow-up information, I don't know what else they expected to achieve. Although the dissemination of information in some areas posed a problem, January's floods saw the successful implementation of an alert system for extreme weather events delivered via SMS. 95% of them, when they receive a message from us, send it on to somebody else. But the role of the early warning system is just one component of the flood response the Commission is examining, with many more submissions to be heard. The inquiry represents an opportunity for everyday Queenslanders affected by the floods to voice their frustrations and suggestions for improvement. Michelle Thomas, QT News. Six years after a chemical fire in Rangba, north of Brisbane, Queensland Health said there are no significant effects from the event. But a small amount of a carcinogen was found in one air sample. According to a Queensland Health report released last night, Narangba residents have nothing to worry about. A chemical fire in the industrial estate nearly six years ago sparked health concerns from residents. But the state's chief health officer says there's no need for any residents to be alarmed. The community can be absolutely reassured that there's no increase in cancer rates or in overall mortality rates. But locals believe the fallout from the fire has had some long-term health implications. Several of them have died of cancer since they left. Now, they're people who were long-term residents in the area. The area around the site is still under lock and key, but local residents say they continue to feel effects. We still have odour problems. Some workers in the industrial estate deny there's been any health risks. As far as we were concerned, it didn't really affect us. The report found one air sample showed an elevated level of chromium, but not enough for concern. It would suggest that we may see one additional cancer per 15,000 people who lived in that community for 70 years and were exposed to that level every day. The Queensland government says the issue has now been put to rest, but residents say they'll continue to monitor their environment for anything out of the ordinary. Samantha Seljak, QUT News. Transport on the Gold Coast is finally on track as preparation for the new light rail project gets underway. The government today announced Goldlink as the company to build the billion dollar transit network. It promises to be one of the largest public transport projects in the country. The Gold Coast Rapid Transit Network will stretch 13 kilometres between Southport and Broad Beach. The project will deliver over 6,000 jobs and inject $25 million into the local economy. The Premier says it will transform the face of the Gold Coast. When it's completed in 2014, it will give residents and visitors alike an easy, hassle-free way to commute around this wonderful city. The government says the rapid growth on the Gold Coast means there's a huge need for this investment in infrastructure. And here on the Gold Coast, we'll have a city of more than 800,000 people. That's a lot of people that will need a high frequency, easy to use public transport option. But the current plans alone will not cure all the Gold Coast's transport problems. We have to connect it in the one hand to the heavy rail at Helmand's Vale, and then we have to go on if we possibly can in the future uh, to Coolangatta. 
The Premier says they will need to speed up the light rail construction if the Gold Coast wins their bid to host the 2018 Commonwealth Games. That announcement is expected next week. The light rail will begin construction late next year. Hannah Doody, QUT News. It's been hailed as a world first. While two Brisbane doctors prepare for surgery on a patient with bowel cancer, on the other side of the world, 3,000 surgeons in Rome were getting a first-hand look at the procedure on their computer screens. Technology has always played a huge role in medical advancement. Now the internet has taken it a step further. Doctors Andrew Stevenson and David Clark pioneered colorectal keyhole surgery more than a decade ago. And now, for the first time, doctors from around the world can watch the procedure over the internet. Well, we couldn't do this sort of operation 20 years ago when we first started doing laparoscopic surgery because the equipment just wasn't good enough. The advanced state-of-the-art equipment Connectivity and technology now available in Queensland hospitals has revolutionised the treatment of colorectal diseases. The live broadcast shows new techniques in keyhole surgery used for the treatment of rectal prolapse and rectal cancer. With more than 14,000 cases reported each year, Australia has the second highest rate of bowel cancer in the world. About one in 17 males have a risk of developing colorectal cancer during their lifetime. And that risk is slightly less for females, but it's about one in 24 patients. Um, so it's extremely common. What's not common is this new procedure. Only 10% of all cases are being treated with keyhole surgery. The current open surgery requires a large cut across the abdomen, which usually ends in a five to six day stay in hospital. Now, as a day case procedure, the smaller keyhole surgery eliminates many of these problems, allowing for a faster recovery and quicker return to work. The treatment that we're doing laparoscopically is the focus of a new uh, multinational randomised trial, which has been funded by the National Health and Medical Research Council. But with growing concerns over possible cuts to the federal budget, it's feared medical research will suffer. Well, the next step has been from laparoscopic onto robotics, which is certainly in its, in its infancy at the moment. Um, and the next will be to have small robots, which basically are placed inside the, the patient themselves. It seems that with a push of a button, anything's possible. Rihanna Bull, QT News. Queensland will play host to one of the most exciting and colourful forms of transport ever seen. A specially commissioned artistic project was unveiled this morning and will embark on its maiden journey later tonight. Onlookers at Roma Street Station were in for a treat this morning as Australia's longest moving canvas made its first appearance. <laughs> Queensland Rail's tilt trains has been transformed by 301 metres of Indigenous artwork. Commissioned nearly a year ago, a vinyl wrap of the work was stuck onto each carriage and the finished product has impressed the creators. To see this 150 metres, it's like, whoa! <laughs> this striking piece of mobile artwork is set to become one of Queensland's most recognisable tourism attractions. So I'm very pleased to put a whole new product on the tourist market and one that I think shows all of the best of what's good about Queensland. This train is the first of two, with work on the second expected to begin later this month. The moving canvas will travel through some of the state's most stunning locations, only fitting it ends in cans, home to some of the most exciting emerging artists. After seeing the project come to life, Judy Watson believes artists everywhere will be keen to let loose. I would say you'll get artists just taking over the environment and swallowing buildings next. Maybe, you know, there'll be more images on um, planes, ocean liners, who knows. <laughs> Queenslanders will get their first look at the art in motion when the train pulls out tonight. Phoebe Parsons, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. And most parts of Queensland are starting to get a real winter feel. This is particularly so in western parts with single figures being recorded overnight in both Ipswich and Toowoomba. From our special Brisbane-based time-lapse camera, we can see how the city woke to a clear sky that was soon covered by some loud light cloud which built as the day progressed but there is little likelihood of rain. Around the nation tomorrow and Canberra is once again expecting a frosty morning but fine and cool conditions are expected elsewhere. Queensland will be mostly fine with rain expected in the tropics. 
That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now and indeed for this week. We'll be back on Monday with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.